Hey, what's up YouTube, Jay's Two Cents here, and I think new buyers who are looking at building their first computer, or even building another computer, but haven't done so in a while, are getting really caught up and confused on how to choose the right motherboard. And I don't blame you guys, there's a lot of crap on motherboards. With the new Silencio Performance Optimized fans, the Cooler Master Nepton 240M delivers the perfect balance of noise and performance. Click the link in the description to find out more. So over the past couple of weeks, I've done a few how to buy style videos. Recently, how to buy a power supply and how to buy a graphics card. You can find those videos here and here. And you guys have really liked that. In fact, you've asked me to do more. In fact, you've asked me to do an entire computer on how to buy when it comes to understanding what all the crap means when you're reading the specs. So I said, okay, we'll do it. And today we're gonna go ahead and take a tour around my Asus X99 Deluxe motherboard because it's got an awful lot of shit on it. And if you guys were just looking at the specs on this, you probably would feel upside down, backwards, inside out, and discombobulated and have no idea what any of it means. So today, hopefully, we're going to solve that. Now, before we dive into this, and I'm going to try and make this as non-confusing as possible, because there's a lot of information on this, and it's really difficult to ascertain what's important and what's not important. And my job today is to try and make you understand the basics and some of the little more advanced stuff you'll find on a motherboard so you can determine whether or not the motherboard you may be looking at is overkill for what you need. Oftentimes, that's the case. Motherboards tend to include a lot of candy features on here that you don't really need, which takes up some of the money into this when you really should be putting it somewhere else. So hopefully today we're going to arm you with the information you need to determine if the motherboard you're currently considering falls in that category. Now, when it comes to motherboards, AMD or Intel, they're gonna, you're going to find some parts of the motherboard that are the same regardless of the brand. Now, for instance, they're all going to have a socket. They're all going to have RAM slots. They're all going to have input uh, I.O. or input and output. And they're all going to have PCI Express slots. Per that's never going to change until the entire way a computer works changes. A computer works changes. That's, that's probably one of the silliest misspeaks I've had in a while. But I think you get what I'm saying. Now, when it comes to the socket, it means that only CPUs that match that socket are going to fit. So the X99 here being a 2011-3 means only 2011-3 socketed CPUs will couple with this motherboard and work. Z97 and Z87 have 1150. A Z77 has 1156, I believe it is. So before you buy your motherboard, you need to decide what CPU you are going to run. I would not recommend picking a motherboard first and then putting a CPU in it. That's a little counterproductive because you need to know what CPU you're gonna buy first because quite often there's features on here that will be wasted if you don't choose the right CPU. For instance, the Z series Intel motherboards like the Z97 I have here or the Z97 I have here. These, and the Z87 I have here. These are overclocking motherboards. That is basically what the Z stands for. It's gonna give you a lot of unlocked functionality when it comes to the motherboard that is going to be appealing for overclockers. So if you're not gonna be buying an overclocking ZPU, C, ZPU, that's kind of a cool one, a CPU, then you're not gonna to need to buy yourself a Z branded motherboard. That's one thing to keep in mind. But on the flip side, if you're gonna be buying some sort of a black edition uh, AMD CPU or a K SKU on the Intel side, which are unlocked overclockable CPUs, you don't want to limit it either by getting a non-overclocking motherboard. So keep that in mind as well. Now, when it comes to the RAM on modern motherboards and current gen and even a past couple of gen uh, motherboards, you're going to notice that there is only going to be either a dual channel or a quad channel config. Now, the X58 platform actually had triple channel. That's an aged, obsoleted platform right now. When it comes to building new equipment, you won't be able to go out and buy an X58. So we're not going to talk about that. But oftentimes people get confused on how many RAM sticks they need and how many ch uh, channels they have on their motherboard because more often than not, you're going to find that there are more RAM slots than there are channels. For instance, this X99 motherboard has eight RAM slots, but it is not an eight channel motherboard. In fact, that'd be pretty damn awesome if it was, but it's not. Most of the time, motherboards will allow two slots per channel. That's why more often than not, you're gonna find eight RAM slots on X79 and X99 motherboards, and you're gonna find four RAM slots on Z-Series and AMD motherboards. 
typically, like I said, they give you two RAM slots per channel. They do that because they want you to have expandability. Now, lower end motherboards may have only one RAM slot per channel to try and save on costs. Or on a low, low end motherboard, you might find that there, you might find there's only two RAM slots, period. It doesn't mean it's a single channel, it just means there's one RAM slot per channel. So you're gonna to wanna to check the specs on the motherboard that you're looking at and see how many channels are available to it. I can pretty much guarantee you will never find more than two channels on a Z series processor, like a Z97 or a Z series motherboard, I should say. And an X series is always gonna be four channel. Maybe in the future we'll get six channel or eight channel, who knows, but right now, at the time of making this video, that is the case. Now here is the part that most people get confused on and I don't blame them because it is probably the most confusing when it comes to specs, and that being the PCI Express slots. Now you're gonna find that there are usually more PCI Express slots than there are capabilities when it comes to SLI or Crossfire. In this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five PC, full length PCI Express slots leading most people to believe you could more than likely put five graphics cards in here, but that's not the case. I almost dropped it. Now here's the skinny when it comes to graphics cards. Neither AMD or Intel support more than four-way SLI or Crossfire or Quadfire or whatever you want to call it. The extra slots on here are for peripherals, things like SSD, uh, PCI Express SSD cards, RAID controllers, sound cards, things of that nature. And what you're gonna notice is that you're gonna see PCI Express 16X, 8X, 4X, and 1X. Now the part that makes people confused is you're gonna see PCI Express 3.0, PCI Express 2.0, or referred to as Gen 2 or Gen 3. And that's gonna make people very confused because they're gonna notice on their new graphics cards they're pretty much all PCI Express 3.0. But if you're building an AMD system, you're gonna see PCI Express 2.0 as being the supported uh, architecture here when it comes to the PCI Express slots. And that tends to freak people out because they go, oh my God, my new power, my new graphics card, it's not gonna work because it's PCI Express 2.0 and I don't know what to do now. I wanna go AMD, but it is 3.0. People get really confused by that. They think that if they go with PCI Express 2.0 motherboard, that their PCI Express 3.0 graphics cards are going to be, dare I say, bottlenecked? No, guys, it doesn't work that way. PCI Express 2.0 at 16X is the same bandwidth as PCI Express 3.0 at 8X. And here's the real kicker. Most of the time when you run an SLI or Crossfire config, the slot is going to downgrade to an 8X anyway. Skunkworks behind me has three GTX 980s in it. But did you know it's actually running 8X, 8X, 16X? One card is 16X, the other two downscaled to 8X. Did that lower my scores and lower my FPS? Absolutely not. So guys, don't get hung up on the PCI Express 2.0 versus 3.0 thing. We are still not maxing out the bandwidth, period. Even at 16X 2.0. Don't worry about it, guys. In the future, it may become a problem. Right now, current gen and a few years into the future, it's still not a problem. The only thing you need to know is that there are 4X slots that, uh, like this one right here, this would be for a sound card or a network card or something of that nature. Other than that, don't get caught up on it. Really, it's not that big of a deal. Now, other little things you're gonna find on here are going to be like USB 3.0 uh, plugs on here for front side USB 3.0 plugs on your case, USB 2.0, some motherboards have onboard reset and power buttons on there. This is useful if you're gonna be putting this in a test bench like I am in that guy right there. That's a Case Labs test bench. Can't wait to build that out. It just makes it so you don't actually have to plug in front side panel connectors, which would go under these slots. These little bitty pins, you're kind of a pain in the ass to get in there. You technically don't have to plug those in. You can control the motherboard right there. A lot of newer motherboards come with trouble code readouts right here. Uh, gives you a number on there. If you have some sort of an error, it, it'll display a number. You go to the manual, you look up the number, and huh, magic, it tells you what's wrong. That's actually really cool. Some of them have clear CMOS buttons in red right on the motherboard. It makes it simple to clear your CMOS without having to pop out a battery because that was the old way overclockers had to reset and clear their CMOS was pull out the battery and do a jumper and wait 10 seconds. Now you just push this little fandangled red button and you're up and running. New overclockers just don't know what we used to have to deal with back in the day. All motherboards are gonna have a plethora of SATA ports because SATA ports are actually becoming obsolete. We have maxed out how fast you can actually transfer data on SATA port, which is six gigabits per second. 
you're always gonna wanna make sure you plug in your optical drives, your hard drives, anything you're plugging into SATA. Always utilize the SATA six gigabit per second. Some of the older motherboards still have a three gigabit per second and six gigabit per second. Some are using the chipset, some are using a built-on controller. You're gonna always wanna use the Intel if possible, if it's an Intel motherboard and uh, six gigabit per second. Otherwise you could actually be slowing down your SSDs by half, that's not a good thing. Uh, some motherboards, like newer motherboards like this, are six gigabit per second only, and brand spanking new motherboards like X99 are starting to feature PCI Express, uh, or excuse me, SATA Express ports, which are for a new standard of uh, connections for SATA. You're also gonna notice something called an M.2, and basically that's an itty bitty little PCB SSD that mounts directly to the motherboard, so you don't have to run SATA power and a SATA cable. It just hooks right onto the motherboard. In this case, there's a slot right here. It stands straight up, kind of like a motherboard boner, if you will, and uh, it not necessarily any faster, but it is just a lot more convenient to plug it in and be up and running with your SSD, and you don't have to change it out or remote mount it somewhere in your case. Now when it comes to the back of the motherboard, they all are gonna have a different array of input and output. This one happens to have two, four, six, eight, 10 PCI Express 3.0 or super speed ports. Has a uh, BIOS reset right here on the back, which is convenient once again for overclockers. Uh, this one ha also happens to feature a wireless on there and a built-in audio. Most motherboards are now gonna include built-in audio, PCI Express 2.0, or excuse me, USB, I've done that in the past, uh, USB 3.0 and 2.0 for backwards compatibility and ethernet cards on there. What's gonna vary is the amount of ports you have for USB 3.0 and 2.0, how many ethernets. You may or may not have a BIOS clear button on the back, but again, those things are all gonna vary based on the level of uh, where the motherboard sits on the tier. The higher the tier, the more stuff you're gonna have. So guys, that's pretty much it. My computer went to sleep, so I guess that means it's time to start ending the video. Actually, that has nothing to do with the video. I'm, I, uh, I just kind of toss that out there. So hopefully this has helped you guys understand motherboards, what all this stuff means, and you guys can already see. If you're not gonna be plugging in two, four, six, eight, ten 10 SATA ports, optical drives, hard drives, SSDs, and you know you can save some cost by finding a motherboard that has other features you need, but don't have as many of those SATA ports. Maybe you're only gonna be running one, running one graphics card. So you don't need five PCI Express slots with a PCI Express 4. So giving you six PCI Express slots, that'd be a little overkill, right? So guys, hope this video has helped you in some way. I uh, hope it's basically simplified some of the stuff for you. As always, uh, we got a pretty decent community following this channel and some very knowledgeable people who are fans of this channel who are always willing to help down in the comment section. If you're one of those people, I greatly thank you for that. I'm only one person. I cannot get to even a fraction of the comments that this channel gets. So I deeply am uh, showing gratitude to you guys for helping out all of the newbies down in the comments who genuinely need your help. Keep it up, guys. It's almost like a really cool community that I should almost have a forum or something going, huh? Sad part is I do at jays2cents.com. I've just been too lazy to be able to keep the website going, but it is a work in progress, guys. I'm working on it. Once again, guys, thanks for watching today's video. Um, follow on Twitter if you have any questions. Put any topics you guys would like me to cover down in the comments. And we're gonna keep this whole how to buy series alive. We're gonna do how to buy a CPU. I already did how to buy a graphics card, how to buy a power supply. We're gonna talk about how to buy um, I guess SSDs and things like that. We're gonna cover the entire computer in this series, guys. So as always, thank you so much for watching. You guys make this channel pretty awesome to keep working on. I love doing videos for you guys. And as always, hope to see you in the next one.